in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 20, very powerful scripture. I, I think I should, I should turn there myself. Um, Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 20, very, very powerful scripture. It says, he that walketh with wise men, my version says, shall be wise. Just for walking with wise men, you have gotten rid of foolishness in your life. He that walketh with the wise men shall be wise. It says, but a companion of fools, it didn't say will be foolish. A companion of fools will not only be foolish, will be destroyed. So destruction has a technology. When you walk with fools, fools here does not mean an insult. It's a description to sustaining a belief system, an ideology that is very inferior and destructive comes from culture, comes from a life of mediocrity, comes from all kinds of motivations that he that works with the wise, that means you want to live a successful life. You have to unashamedly break your pride and look for the company of wise winners and pay the price to be part of that company. It is true. He that works with the wise, the Bible says, will be wise, but the companion of fools shall be destroyed. Write this down if you're writing, please. Everything advances and multiplies on the basis of relationships. It takes a relationship between a man and his wife to have children. It takes a relationship between a man and the Holy Spirit to produce a supernatural life. It takes a relationship between board members in a company, leaders in a ministry, and, and all kinds of, of, of people. It takes networking to succeed in today's world. It is very important. Everything advances and everything multiplies on the basis of relationship. You move forward when the various organs in your body and systems in your body relate with one another. Your nervous system, your digestive system, your respiratory system, they work in synergy to move this organism forward. Very, very important. Relationships are investments. Please understand this. Relationships are investments by every definition. And so you want to really understand relationships, you must understand investments. When you put some money in a mutual fund or in an investment, you give it time. That means relationship is a product of time. You give it time and you allow your profits to accrue. And then you now begin to reap the benefits. You must be willing to invest in strategic relationships. Invest your resources, invest your honor, especially when you seek to relate with people who have results. Listen to me. Never try to meet great people at your terms. Never try to relate with great people at your terms. It is pride. When you want to relate with a great man, adaptation, a great mentor would say, is proof of honor. You must sustain the adaptability to be able to work with the limitations and the, the whatever it is, the, the, the extra luggages that come with great people. Some of them can be temperous. Some of them can be impatient. Some of them can be insultive. Some of them can be sarcastic. Some of them can be vocally arrogant. You must be able to forbear these things and adapt if you truly seek to receive of the gift, the riches of the greatness that, that is within them. This is very important. Elijah was a very temperous man, for instance, but Elisha followed him carefully until he got a double portion of that grace. It is very important. The disciples walking with Jesus, even though some of them were older than him, he would call them many times little children. Little children, do you have any catch? You can imagine how insulting that would be for people like Peter. 
but they made up their minds and they embraced him as touching what he represented. It's very, very important. Listen to me. Relationships are very important. The favor systems in our lives are relational in nature. We must sustain the grace and the ability to value relationships. Today, um, many of you, millions of you, truthfully speaking, without exaggeration, all over the internet have celebrated me and continue to celebrate me because of a destiny connection. I may not know some of you, but God sees my heart that I honor you with all my heart and I celebrate you for taking the thoughtfulness. Listen, let me teach you a lesson. If you find people who make you a big deal, if you find people who do not trivialize your relevance, please honor them. Please appreciate them. From the one who sweeps your house, the one who washes your clothes, the one who stands in prayer for you. Master the art of communicating honor to people as a principle of sustaining relationships. Do not trivialize the slightest show of honor. Not everybody in the world thinks Apostle Joshua Selman is a big deal. I'm sure that there are people who can look at me, you know, the internet celebrating this, this man with all due respect and humility. And they may just feel, what is the big deal about him? I have profound respect for them. But when I find a people, and especially a generation, that decides to choose you as the voice of God to that generation and pledge their loyalty and support, it is, it is gross dishonor to take that generation for granted. This is why God sees my heart that I love every one of you and I appreciate and celebrate you. It is not Joshua Selman's birthday. It is the birthday of a generation. It is your birthday. We are celebrating um, the synergy of relationships that is ultimately leading to the revelation of the Christ. More than the exaltation of a man. More than appreciating the impact of a man to a generation. Relationships are important. God has blessed me today with profound relationships. God has honored me with wonderful friends, men and women of God, a company of, of profound people. You cannot imagine uh, during the lockdown, I've, have, I've had a bit of liberty, you know, to ease up the stress from my, my routine. As, as, as you know, I, I live a very busy schedule and I'm honored having that schedule to be able to go, you know, around the world just taking this gospel of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. But the lockdown has afforded me some opportunity to rest and then to connect with valuable friends. And, 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 and many times I talk with these people and we glean from the wisdom and the grace that God has supplied one for another. And it's amazing how my life has changed. Profound people, profound gifts that God has brought to my life. It is very important. I have been blessed. I consider myself to be one of the most blessed men and women of, uh, I said men and women, men, men of God in, in, um, in, 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 in the world because I have about, honestly speaking, and I say this sincerely from my heart, I have about the, the most loyal workforce that any man can have, sincerely speaking. I have about the most honest, truthful, diligent, committed workforce uh, these people will walk their lives to see to it that, that the glory of God is revealed in and through the ministry and then my life. And even as I'm speaking now, they know that I bless them with all my heart and I'm grateful. Grateful for their love, grateful for their commitment. Um, I, was, I was humorously shown some videos that were made by some of the uh, departments, you know, just celebrated me. And uh, I'm not a very emotional person, but I, I couldn't help you know but just just five tears coming down from my eyes i was really really touched relationships do they mean anything to you or do you trivialize people are, are your relationships parasitic or mutually beneficial this is very important there are many people who come into the lives of people and just pray pray on their gifts pray on their influence pray on their achievements Pray on everything just for self-aggrandizement. And that is terrible. Relationships are very, very important. I bless God for granting me grace to relate with you. I bless God for granting me the honor to be able to relate with a generation. It's very important. It's an act of his mercy to me. 
No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Mm. No wall you won't keep down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. That's my testimony. There's no shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming after me. Mm. There's no lie you will kick down, wall you will tear down, coming after me. God has blessed me with great relationships. And I truly, truly want to use this opportunity to celebrate and appreciate everybody who has contributed to making my life what it is today. I am a product of many graces. I am a product of the endorsement of several people. I'm a product of the participation of many people. Let's go very quickly. Number six. The sixth point that I'll be sharing very quickly is that you must seek genuine spiritual empowerment. Let's hurry up. Genuine spiritual empowerment. I believe in impartation. Numbers chapter 27 from verse 18 to 20. I'll just give you the references. I may not um, quote them and may, I may not read them because of time. Numbers chapter 27, please. 18 to 20. And then Deuteronomy 34 and verse 9. It says that you should anoint Joshua. Find Joshua and, and, you know, and Aaron and all of that and anoint them. Joshua was anointed, he had the spirit of God, but he was anointed. And that he, he told Moses to take some of his honor and give Joshua. Honor is a grace, it can be transferred. Very, very powerful. Psalm 89 from verse 20 to 24. Psalm 89, maybe I should turn uh, there just, just for emphasis. Psalm 89, I'll read it very, very quickly. Psalm 89 from verse... 20, 89 from verse 20. Let me open my Bible here. From verse 20, it says, I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. It says, with whom my hand shall be established, my arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy, because of the anointing now, the enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. 24, but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his horn be exalted. There is immunity that comes when you are empowered. There is grace that comes when you are empowered. You must seek genuine spiritual empowerment. Now, there are people who just stop in the realm of intellect, in the realm of the flesh, and downplay the place of spiritual empowerment. It is risky and it is costly. Life is spiritual. Life is intellectual, I agree. I spoke about value earlier on, but life is very spiritual. And as the days progress, especially in this day and age, there is a need for divine assistance, divine empowerment. You need impartation and you need the place of the prophetic. Let me say this very emphatically. Now, I know respectfully speaking, and I hope I don't get into trouble saying this, but I know that there's been a lot of abuses and imbalances in the prophetic and apostolic ministry, especially across Africa. It's a sad reality that we may have to admit that there's been a lot of, um, there is a mix of all kinds of things. I agree, and I know God is helping us. However, please do not make the mistake of ignoring the place of the prophetic in actualizing the destiny of a man and in rising to a point where you are at the zenith of your kingdom relevance. The prophetic has always in scripture and will always play a very vital role. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13. Hosea 12 and verse 13. It says, and by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet they were preserved. It's very, very important. Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. At the end of this broadcast, I'll be making reference to this scripture as I pray for us. It's a scripture that has blessed me for many years. Ezra 6 and verse 14. It says, uh, and the elders of, of the land builded and they prospered through the prophesying, you know, of, of, of um, Haggai the prophet, Zechariah the son of Edo, and they built and, you know, and they, and they accomplished, they, they finished it. I think that, that that's the rendition. 
it is important there is the place of the prophetic very important there is the place of the prophetic where words are spoken over your life i'm a product of many anointings words have been spoken over my life and and it's amazing how these words have changed me completely i have had the privilege of men and women speaking over my life and and my life has been transformed sometimes overnight by the power of the prophetic number seven the seventh point that i'm going to give us on this this privileged day of my birthday as a key to rising to a point of transgenerational relevance the seventh point and very important is live a life of joy and gratitude you want to influence a generation you must live a life of joy and gratitude a few scriptures please habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 17 to 18 habakkuk 3 and verse 17 to 18 it talks about the fig tree not blossoming that even though there's no olive on the vine and so on and so forth they say yet i will rejoice and i will joy in the god of my salvation we live in a generation that you know seems to endure sadness and gloominess we have all kinds of emotional justifications and please please don't don't misunderstand me i know that people are going through several things people have lost their loved ones through the pandemic you know People have lost money, people have lost opportunities, people have lost time, you know, and, and several things. But, but I want to encourage you, it's important for you to know that joy is very important in a believer's life. Very, very important. And gratitude. I have, I, have, I have said it again and again that ingratitude is one of the greatest causes of delay. I think even more than demonic oppression. A life that is not apt to notice the, the slightest show of grace and kindness from God. It is very important. I live a life of gratitude. This morning, uh, I was just blessing the Lord for my life and I lay flat on the, on the, on the floor and I, I was just rolling before him and I was just saying, Majesty, thank you. Look what you've made out of my life. It's very important. There are many of you today, the doors of favor have closed over your life because you are not careful to be grateful. You are not careful to be grateful. Remember what God has done in your life. He said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not, forget not his benefits. Never forget where God has taken you from. Never forget, don't allow the joy of the palace make you forget that once upon a time I didn't have food to eat. Once upon a time nobody would have placed a demand upon the grace of God on my life, you would say. Once upon a time I would be looking for 100 naira or 100 dollars or whatever currency it is in your region. Now look what God has made and done with my life. Right there where you are at home or wherever you're, you're watching from, can you just take a minute to say, Lord, thank you? Can you just take a minute to express your thanksgiving? When you are thoughtful, you will be grateful. Many people are not grateful because they don't think. They don't think. Lord, thank you. Thank you for Joshua Selman's life. I am honored for what you have made out of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy, for your favor. You have not allowed the desires of our enemies to come upon us. You have shown us great mercy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Keep telling him thank you. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Mention everything he has done. Thank you for life. Thank you, O oh God. I may not have a job, but I have life. Thank you for the gift of good people. Thank you for well-behaved children. Thank you for a good wife. Thank you for a good husband. Thank you for granting me the anointing. Thank God for your membership. I know you are trusting God for greater membership, but thank God. Thank God for salvation. It is very, very important. Very important. Go ahead, just one minute. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We are not careful. We are lavish, lavish, lavish for the things that you have done 
for the battles that you have won we say thank you to you be all the glory for a life that you have so blessed you have invested your jealousy upon my life thank you thank you thank you hallelujah hallelujah amen i live a life of joy and i live a life of gladness believe me i can tell you this you will never find me putting my hand on my chin wondering what's my life going to become no 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 i live a very joyful life i live a very grateful life there are many things i'm trusting god to do in the ministry to do in my life and i thank god for the things he's doing but i'm very careful to say thank you i'm not ashamed or afraid to go on my knees and listen it is not only god you should thank you must thank men if you thank god alone you are a hypocrite because god uses men to bless you daddy thank you for what you have done in my life mommy thank you i have gotten i think sincerely without exaggeration from night until this broadcast started i think there's been at least maybe five or six thousand text messages i, I just had to plug my phone and just leave it charging and go to bed and then i keep you know just i've not even read more than 98 percent of the text messages when i'm done and everything is settled i may not be able to respond to everybody but you can imagine to have over 6,000 people, I don't know how many may be sending now all over the world. Millions of people saying thank you. Thanksgiving is powerful. It is the seed for more. When you stand before a door that refuses to open, it's not just to bind and cast. Thank God that he even brought you close to that door. I live a very grateful and a joyful life. When you live a grateful life and you live a joyful life, you will see dimensions of God's grace. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. In all your ways. In all your ways. Use today to thank God. Not just for Joshua Selman, but thank God for Jesus. Thank God for what he has made out of our lives. As frail as we are, as limited as we are, as imperfect as we are. Look what he's brought out of our lives beauty and glory very very important let me give us the last point number eight the last key to influencing a generation is practice genuine love mm. practice genuine love i've done a teaching what is love you may want to listen to it is a two-part series very powerful please get it online and listen to it there are four dimensions of love that i teach that love the bible talks about the length the breadth the height of the love of god that true genuine love has passion attached to it there cannot be genuine love when there is no passion number two Genuine love requires commitment. There is a commitment dimension to it. Number three, genuine love has pleasure to it. Love cannot just be an episode of pain. There is a pleasure dimension to love. And then finally, sacrifice. These are the four dimensions of love. Passion, commitment, pleasure, sacrifice. One more time. Passion, commitment pleasure sacrifice but i submit to you that the highest and the noblest expression of love is not passion it's not commitment it's not even pleasure it's sacrifice we live in a generation respectfully speaking that is very obsessed about pleasure and every time we cannot derive pleasure from a thing or a relationship we usually just assume that there is no love there. But the highest and the noblest expression of love is sacrifice. John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world. He didn't just prove it by laughing around. He didn't just prove it by multiplying bread. That he gave his one 
and only begotten son. Of course, now the first begotten of we the brethren. But at that time, the only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him, the Bible says, should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 15. When you read John 15 from verse 12 to 13. John 15. Let, let me read it for us very quickly. John 15 from verse 12. It says, this is my commandment, Jesus is speaking, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life. That means as far as the earth realm is concerned, there is no manifestation of love that is higher than this, than a man lay down his life. Hear me, my precious generation. Hear me, dear people of God. Love is not just about what you get. Love many times may require you laying down your life. And I've pledged myself and my life to serve my generation in life and in death as God grants grace. That I will serve the purposes of the kingdom in this generation. And if it will cost me my life, like Paul, let it be for me that to live is Christ. And if I die serving his purposes, it will be with a smile and honor that it, it would be that I serve my generation and I serve the purposes of God. Your life must be poured out as a sacrifice. Enough of receiving from people. Make up your mind that others is now time for people to receive from you. To receive of your gift, to receive of your grace, your benevolence. Very, very important. 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 3. As we prepare to pray, 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 3, it says, Now there abided these three, faith that moves mountains, hope that maketh not ashamed, and love. The Bible talks about these tripartite forces. Faith. You don't have faith. There's so much you cannot do. Faith, the token of victory. Hope that makes not a shame and love, but it says the greatest. Please hear me. The greatest is not miracles. Thank God for the grace of God upon my life in the working of miracles and signs and wonders. And I know that so many of you have been blessed on that wise. I have been humbled by the profound miracles that God continues to do in and through these hands and in and through this life. I thank God for the privilege and the opportunity to dispense the mysteries of the kingdom as committed to me by his majesty. But I submit to you that the greatest testimony I desire in my life is not that Joshua Selman was a miracle worker. The greatest testimony I desire in my life is not that Joshua Selman raised the dead and, and brought miracles to homes, as important as that is. The greatest testimony I desire in my life is not that Joshua Selman is a man of depth and revelation. No, it's not that Joshua Selman is a man of excellence and so on and so forth. The greatest testimony I desire is that Joshua Selman walked with God as a passionate lover of God and a passionate lover of men. I don't use men. I love men. I love men. I don't just love God alone. Jesus Christ, he knows I love him with all my heart. But I'm telling you, I love men. I love every one of you following, listening, connecting with our various platforms. I love you with all my heart. I love you. I'm not only trying to use you to build a career called ministry. No, love is palpable. In fact, did you know, I'm, I'm sure that my, my blessed parents are watching from just and, and my family members, I love you so much. I, I thank my mom and dad. I believe that they are watching and following and all my siblings, precious gifts that God has given me. Uh, please allow my bias. Let me just take a moment to bless this precious gift that God has given me in my life. Um, um, they, they are a big deal. They have loved me and believed in me. And I truly love and honor you with all my heart. I appreciate you. I, I bless God for my parents for being discerning enough to give me the name. Did you know that Selman means the way to love? What a name. What a precious prophecy. 
And it is my desire that I continue to live out that name, to love people genuinely. Listen, let the era of selfishness, let the era of self-centeredness, whether it is from men of God, we men of God, or from business people, or in relationships, use this opportunity of this birthday to kill it completely. Nobody will applaud you for being a pest and, and taking from people. You must make up your mind that I'm going to be a lover of God and I'll be a lover of men. And start, please start from your neighborhood. You really want to celebrate Joshua Selman? You send me financial blessings. I am grateful, but it, it, it may not be satisfying to me. You send me material gifts. I am grateful, but it may not be satisfying to me. The greatest satisfaction is to bless the Lord for me and then to be able to extend my ideologies and convictions by granting people access to these teachings and then to be able to share the love of Jesus to those around you. If you buy a bag of rice and share it for the people in your community and say this is to honor Joshua Selman's birthday, I love you and I bless God for you, I would have derived the greatest satisfaction from my relationship. It, there is only so much food I can eat. There is only so much money I can use. There is only so much I can do with influence and the accolades of men. But what if you do it to someone in the name of the Lord? This is my desire sacrifice live a life of sacrifice and do not be embarrassed about it precious generation hear me do something for people that will make them remember you at the end of this life as i wrap up it is not our sermons that will be remembered it is not our intellectual prowess that will be remembered he says so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom I live ever conscious of the gift of life that God has given me. And as I sat back this morning reflecting on my own life, thanking him for what he has done in my life and the privilege he's granted me to go to the nations of the world. You know, my heart bled so much that when the lockdown came because of several meetings uh, that, that, that I was already scheduled to have and several people who had anticipated my coming. And let me use this opportunity to assure you those from all of those regions I, I was to be in the UK again, South Africa again, the United States again, Canada again, Dubai and um, 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 Israel. Israel was already um, uh, uh, cooking up and, and then um, a number of African nations, Kenya, um, Zambia, Ghana, and some of them probably if the lockdown is lifted, I may still be able to honor them, but for many, I'm sure it may not be possible again. And then, of course, many meetings within the nation. I want you to know that by the grace of God is a debt I owe you, and God will grant grace. It will be an honor to bring a divine visitation to those regions. And as soon as all this is done by the grace of God, and, and uh, life's uh, the, uh, normalcy returns as, as we anticipate. Um, it would be an honor to visit these nations again and again and to bring this dimension of the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God. Thank you. I love people. And I pray that God will give us the heart of sacrifice, the heart to be able to lay down our lives for others so that when all is said and done, it would not be that he was a millionaire or billionaire. It would not just be that he was an, a, a, an amazing preacher with intellectual prowess. It would not just be that he built a ministry that was global. That at the end of our lives, like Don Moen will always say, that there is just one thing that matters. Did I live my life for truth? Like Don Moen will say, that all my treasures will mean nothing. It is only what I've done for love's reward that will stand the test of time. I want to pray for you. This would be my birthday gift. The word that I've brought and the prophetic decree that will come upon you. Psalm 71 verse 21. This is the word that the Lord gave me for my own birthday. Every time I celebrate my birthday, the Lord gives me a word that becomes a compass for the next level of my life. And this was the word he gave me. 
and I'm sharing it with you, Psalm 71 and verse 21. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Some versions say roundabout. Thou shalt increase my greatness. A man's greatness can increase. A man's influence can increase. Thou shalt increase my greatness. I want to pray for you now. Please, wherever you are, in one minute, I'd like you to begin to pray and say, Lord, as your servant is a... For your name is great and greatly to be praised. I love you, Lord, and I lift my hands to worship you. Oh, my soul rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear, and let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ears. Are you praying? I'd like you to open up your heart. What do you want God to do in your life? For some of you, you are trusting God for a miracle. For some of you, you are trusting God for a breakthrough. Go ahead. I'm already in tears here, just worshiping the Lord for what He's doing. Go ahead. Celebrate His majesty. Place a demand. Father, I open up my heart. Let this prophecy bring healing. Let this prophecy bring restoration. You have a sick person. Bring them before your screen. Take joy, my King. In what you hear. And let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Take the stage, Lord. Have your way. I'm just a vessel and nothing more. Lord, when you're done, please take the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glorify. I'm satisfied just to see you glorify. Hey, I'm satisfied to see you glorify. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in this place. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is strong in this place, strong in your homes, your offices, strong in this place to change your life, to turn your life around. Carlos Cabarando Selicapaya. That anointing is coming to your home, coming to your body, coming to your spiritual life. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Ah. Your hair is your name. Breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Ah. Breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Kalabashalanda Bradosiata. 
Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Your hair, what hair is your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Yes, Lord. Pray, don't be distracted. I'm giving you a piece of my secret place. It's more than a broadcast. It's, it's an initiation into a life of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Majesty. We're praying. Majesty, your grace has found me just as I am, empty handed but alive in your hands. Hey, Majesty, your Forever I am changed by your love In the presence of your majesty yeah. Forever I am changed by your love Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is what it's all about. More than Joshua Selman, a revelation of Jesus and the glorification of the same. I'm about to pray for you shortly. I'd like you to ask anything you are trusting God for. Go ahead. Following us on Instagram and, and Twitter and the YouTube page, Facebook, go ahead. Let the Lord know what you trust from Him. I'm about to release that grace all over the nations. For some of you, it's a new level in ministry. For some of you, it's a new level in family. Some of you, is an age-long captivity to be broken. For some of you, it's a new dimension in the anointing. For some of you, it's access to revelation and insight. Go ahead, pray. One more minute and I'm praying for you. Kobaratushia. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Your life is about to change. Ela basu brandege balatus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now please listen. Listen to me. Listen very carefully. I don't mean to be proud and forgive me if I sound proud. But the Lord has put a mysterious anointing upon the life of this man you are watching. The anointing of the Spirit upon my life is not for a ministry. It's not for a nation. It's for a generation. And the Lord has honored His word upon my life. I have a covenant with God that releases possibilities to the lives of people. And He has not failed. I want to pray for you. I want you to believe God 
for strange manifestations in your life. Now, everywhere in your home, your office, I'd like you to stretch your hands towards your screen. Stretch your hands towards me. I want to pray now. I want to pray now. These are not the hands of a man. These are the hands of Jesus stretched through a man. I'd like you to stretch your hands right now. Following on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and whatever platform you're going to be watching this from, stretch your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my precious global family. I pray for all who are following right now connecting. Some are in tears. Some are having their hearts open towards you, trusting to receive. You have granted me the privilege of life on this day and an opportunity to share that life with millions of people all over the world. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. Let the anointing of the Spirit move from my hands to every home, to every office, to every situation. In the name of Jesus, let there be a birthing of new, fresh hunger for spiritual things. A desire and a passion for the things of the Spirit. For those whose prayer life has gone down. For those whose worship life has gone down. I pray in the name of Jesus. Let there be a fresh visitation from God. A fresh visitation. I pray by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. A fresh visitation. By the power of the Holy Ghost. A fresh visitation. I pray for many who are carrying burdens burdens that no one may know from america to the united kingdom to canada germany africa nigeria in the name of jesus i stretch my hands and i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit be delivered right now be delivered right now i rebuke infirmity Everyone trusting God for a miracle. I stretch my hands. You're on the wheelchair. In the name of Jesus. Every kind of infirmity. I cause that devil. Be free right now. Be perfected. Be made whole. In the name of Jesus. I pray for those who are trusting for an anointing. For the next level of life in ministry. For the next level of life in business. For the next level of life in family. I stretch my hands, receive that grace. May that grace come upon you right now. I place an anointing upon you that distinguishes you. I declare that you are a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke delay from your life. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke delay from your life by the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. I pray favor, favor upon your life, upon your ministry. I pray for every son and every daughter in the faith and, and in the gospel. May you carry this same fire. Reproduce it in the name of Jesus. I bless you. I decree and declare that it is well with you. The hand of God is strong upon your life. In the name of Jesus, you will find purpose. You will find your place in life. Gener your generation will celebrate you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share it to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. For watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, 
it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain 